Welcome back to the Michael D. Show. I'm your host, Michael D. Butler, global book publisher in Dallas, Texas, in the Beyond Publishing Studios. So excited about our next guest. Bob Pellerin has written an awesome book. He's not a first-time author, and he definitely knows this space of technology. His book, AI Business Strategies, Leveraging Artificial Intelligence as a Competitive advantage let me bring on startup founder author speaker cto bob how are you today thanks for joining us i'm doing great thanks michael well well tell me a little bit about this book there's a lot of buzz about it and people are talking about it what motivated you to write this book uh actually quite a few things i've been working with ai since the early uh, 2000s i did some work with the university of montana for example and uh, i mean prior to that look i'm always involved heavily in, in various industries. Specifically, I work with technology. I worked with like Microsoft, Micron PC or Micron Electronics. They've had several names. Um, really, artificial intelligence was a, a dream of mine. I write sci-fi, as you may know. And to me, it's the ultimate in geekiness, if I may put it this way. And because I've, look, I've worked for law firms, I've worked for manufacturers, I actually do a lot of work in the food industry. And what's interesting is I realized all the potential that artificial intelligence has, and it's being ignored really by a lot of the industry. So several years ago, I began working with uh, various groups. I do a lot of startups as well. And artificial intelligence was always there in the background. Now, surprisingly, uh, I never thought it would catch on the way it did. I mean, as soon as ChatGPT came out, I went, wow, they're, they're slowly like catching up to what I've been experiencing in my reality of, of just how useful this can be. And so I, I wanted to share that. So at first I had, you know, several years ago, I'd written a lot of AI created poetry. It's going to sound a little weird, maybe off subject a tiny bit, but um, I, as soon as ChatGPT made the news, uh, more or less for the fun of it, um, I started sharing it with a lot of friends and relatives and so forth. And people were saying, oh, you should publish that. So I've actually released that on Amazon. And as a follow-up immediately after, I realized that really the need was in the business. Uh, you know, the executives needed to understand what can I do? And what happens really, imagine this, you have a business, whether you're producing uh, you know, widgets or whether you're you know, processing food and whatnot, at the end of the day, you have an obligation to yourself to look into it. Because if you think about it, if you don't do it, everybody else is doing it. So you're going to be a huge disadvantage if you don't at least understand what you're not doing or why. I mean, if you have a, you know, if you like the way you work and you're more of a traditionalist and you say, we've been doing this this way for so long, I understand that. And there is that sort of shock factor in society that, that makes certain individuals, certain industries more reluctant to look at that whether it's for ethical reasons, whether it's for, I mean, some people feel it's, it's morally wrong to let computers do things. But at the end of the day, if you think about it, it's really just an extension of a database where we, we have, as humans, have gathered things into books and then we've gathered things into databases. And the ease of retrieval was really a, a you know, huge game changer for us uh, for years and years and years. I mean, if you think Google and you think you know, whatever the, you know, whatever example you want to use. But so we've slowly moved forward. And now we've got the possibility of letting machine not only, you know, get data back because retrieval, we've already done that. We were there. And now what we're doing is it's able to not only go on and get the information, but it can actually make sense of it and bring it back to us in a manner that is more, you know, to the point and you really get, specifically what you're asking for. I mean, uh, ChatGPT is perfect example. Before, if you said, hey, you know, I want to know how to make a recipe to make X, uh, Google will give you a whole lot of results. And then, you know, Google, Bing, they're all the same. I'm just talking about a straight search engine. But if you're looking at an actual AI, what it will do is actually go through it and return, especially if you're telling it, hey, I've got these ingredients, it'll just return you an answer. Because sometimes really you want to know, hey, is this rash does it look normal what do i do with it i'm not not suggesting that you use it for medical reasons but the point is it has the ability to look at a lot of data come back and provide you with an actual answer and it's great at making things like lists you say hey what should i do today i live here it can go out can figure out what's around come back and presto so 
the I'm here with best-selling author Bob Pellerin, AI business strategy. He's he's a multiple award-winning author. He's a tech startup founder. CTO Bob is his handle. One thing I noticed about you, Bob, and we're going to have you speak uh, to a group of my authors in the mastermind this week, this uh, coming month, is is the number of YouTube views you've got. Uh, just reviewing products. I mean, tell me, how did you get started in your love of technology? and uh, doing product reviews like this? I have to blame uh, the pandemic a little bit for that one, to be honest with you. Uh, I've been working with, uh, with several people in the background. And, you know, at some point you, you hit a stage where you've got a bit of extra time and things got postponed. And so I, I really put my soul and my heart out into not only writing science fiction books, I've got a few of them that are unpublished and I need to uh, take the time to do something with those. Uh, but also I decided to go into uh, really start making once a week a video. And it was really based on what I enjoy doing. So I stick to technologies. Uh, and what I mean by that are things that are useful. I usually do a lot of virtualization. I do a lot of, uh, I even review EVs, for example, since I do believe that that is the future. And if you look at the common trend, uh, with their common uh, thread rather with all the things that I do is it's really about technology and things that are useful for individuals. I, I really want to educate. I really want to help people out there and I really want to help you grow and succeed in your business. And I really think that's artificial intelligence is part of the key to that. Well, Bob, we touched on something earlier where you said there's two schools of thought. Basically, there's those that are uh, late adopters that are kicking and screaming, saying, no, we don't need this. You know, AI is going to take over the world and take away all the jobs. But you, you had a more balanced approach that I, I, I subscribe to. And that is the technology is here. We might as well use it. It's kind of like when Google first came out with the search engine. Right. It's, it's just a matter of everybody's using it, leverage the good parts of it. And um I, I think since you're a business owner and a startup founder, I mean, your competitors are already using this tool to get the competitive A game. So AI business strategies, levering, leveraging artificial intelligence is a competitive advantage. I just want to quote from the book. You say in today's fast paced world, bit a business that can harness the power of AI are poised to dominate their industries. What's been the funnest part about writing this book for, uh, for you, Bob? Um, part of the research was really talking to different industries. I was talking, um, for example, at you know school board level. I have a lot of uh, uh, of stakes there where I, I participate, and I'm actually a commissioner for school board up here in Canada. Uh, but the other things is I I spread a wide net on this. I was talking to food producers, I was talking to uh, manufacturers, and so forth, and trying to get a feel as to where they were, what they were looking at. And because it's not only about reduction, because that's what we hear in the news about reduction of personnel or, or that type of sort of thing. I, I don't foresee really the AI strictly just replacing a human. I think it's it, it, sort of like saying, hey, Google's going to take over and we're going to be able to, you know, there's still librarians out there. There's still a need for the human interaction. So it's not really a game changer in the sense that it's going to be a you know a machine sitting down in front of a computer uh, all day i mean that's, that's a ridiculous uh, <laughs> sort of example but the point is you're not replacing a human being with a robot like android that has access to this ai it's really about enhancing when you want to do research quickly and you want to do those things um if i may michael can i actually give you an example of one of the things that i've done that's yeah, absolutely me? uh the book actually has an introduction uh by brian podolak who's the CEO of a company called Vocodia. It's going to go uh, public soon. And I'm actually a shareholder. I was there right from the conception part with Brian and with uh, Jim, his partner. And one of the things that we first wanted to do with AI is we sat down and thought, okay, what is wrong with the existing industry of the call center? And perfect example, when you have, whether it's five or 500 people that talk on the phone, they come in on a Monday and they're cheerful and life is good. Their first calls are really animated. They're full of energy. And by Friday at 4.59, uh, they're depleted. They've been told no numerous times. Maybe they, you know, they have, uh, regardless, the point is the, the energy level is not consistent. And then you've got the whole personnel, the HR 
portion of it as well, where you've got individuals that uh, get sick, don't feel so well, um, miss the bus. And, you know, so you, you've got always to deal with those sort of things. And of course, you do have, uh, you know, some jobs like that that are not necessarily easy on the emotional side or the intellectual side. If you're repeating a script all day, it does it's not for everyone. Let's put it that way. So some people, unfortunately, will not last in those types of jobs very long because it's very repetitive and so forth. Uh, when you start introducing artificial intelligence to do this, now, I don't want to get uh, too geeky, but you can clone someone's voice. So if you're a political candidate or if you're the president of a company that makes you know, a pen, whatever it is that you want to sell, you can actually emulate or, you know, Deep fake, if you want to use the, the, the you know some of the lingo that's out deep there, fake, yeah, yeah. So we can use you uh, to basically make these calls. And imagine this: so I can have our backend, right, the Vocodia backend called Visa, call twenty thousand individuals at the same time. Now, some people will say, "Oh, wow, this is horrible." Well, what if you're an airline? Imagine you're an airline, and there's a major whatever it is, snowstorm, hurricane, you name it, and all of a sudden your switchboard gets inundated with calls. Now, yeah. if you've had, let's say you, I don't know how many they have, honestly, but let's say they have 100 or 500 people waiting for these phone calls, and all of a sudden they're getting 20,000 because it's a major snowstorm, uh, they can't cope. So people are waiting for hours on the phone. With this, you've got 20,000 instantaneous calls. It doesn't work. A few hours later, they can, you know, they can bring it up. And the point is, is these... They're AIs, they're not recordings. They're not saying, hi, we know this is snowstorming. It could actually be programmed and learned to say, wow, you're trying to go to Denver. Can I help you right now? Can I help you rebook? So the AI could be given enough autonomy to help to a certain degree. So, I mean, I think it's it's just, it changes the industry. Completely. Bob, a lot of people are asking for you for media interviews since you've launched the book. Congratulations. The feedback has been incredible. You've gone number one on Amazon. What's the best way for people to reach out to you and to get you on their podcast, to get you on their uh, interview? Uh, look, the best way would be really to uh, visit bobpellerin.com, which is my author website. And from there, you can click on the contact us. Uh, I'm also, as you can see by the background, I'm also known as CTO Bob. So there's also ctobob.com where I've got a, a blog and so forth. It tends to be more technical. Um, I, I do, because I've done both ends, I've spent most of my life both you know, managing things as director of work for major international law firms, for example. I've been CIO for a firm out of California at one point. So, uh, And on the opposite side, I love virtualization and artificial intelligence. So I've really done a lot of very technical uh, portions uh, you know, on the flip side. So I know both worlds and I enjoy well, we're definitely going to have, have, have you come back. And uh, I know you're speaking to my authors next month. They're so excited about it in my mastermind. But on the Michael D TV show, we interview amazing authors from around the world that are doing incredible things. Go ahead and grab Bob's book, AI Business Strategies Now on Amazon. And you'll see why it's an Amazon bestseller and why everybody is talking about it. Bob, Thanks for taking time to be with us on the Michael D. Show today. Thank you so much for inviting me. That was great.